Founded in 1970 and home to one banner, the Portland Trailblazers are one of the most storied franchises in all of the National Basketball Association. Located in Portland, Oregon, they've been home to some of the greatest players in history. Bill Walden was the hero who brought Portland their only championship in 1977 and an MVP to boot. Although, due to injuries, he would only play five years for the team. On the other hand, we have a guy so smooth, his nickname was Clyde the Glide. Drafted by the Blazers in 1983, Clyde Drexler would play 12 years for the franchise, bringing them back to the heights they saw with Walton. Even though he'd take them to two NBA Finals, he unfortunately ran up against two Dynasty teams in the Pistons and Bulls and didn't come up with any rings. But this doesn't diminish his resume though, as he took them to their most recent Finals appearance in 1992. Now, I know what you're saying, and of course last, but certainly not least, we have Damian Lillard. Drafted out of Weber State, Lillard would revive the Trailblazers and give them a player so beloved in his city that fans almost don't care about winning as long as he stays, which I feel is unprecedented. All three of these guys are either in or going to be in the Hall of Fame, and all three absolute legends for their franchise. But only one can be the GOAT. So let's talk about it. Who is the greatest player in Portland Trailblazers history? Yo, what's up everybody, it's your boy 2KJ, and today I want to start my new series, Case for Franchise Go. We're going to go through every single NBA team and talk about who could be considered the best player in the team's history. If you have a team that you want to be next in the series, put it down in the comment section below, and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell if you like the content. But enough of that, let's get on to our first player, the legend, Bill Walton. Taken with the number one pick in the 1974 draft, Bill Walton was touted as a franchise-altering player out of UCLA after putting up averages of 20.3 points per game, 15.7 rebounds, and 5.5 assists in his first three seasons. Oh, and also, he only lost four total games in college, going an unreal 86-4 with two national championships and winning three straight college play of the year awards. After being drafted to the Blazers with that number one pick, he would go on to have two relatively injury-plagued first seasons, dealing with a chronic foot injury that would nag him most of his career, among other injuries he would sustain in the Jeep accident. In those two seasons, though, he would play a combined 86 games, which really wasn't ideal, but when he was on the court, he was a double-double machine and showed those flashes of greatness. He would get to show us this in full view in the 1976-1977 season, which he would play a solid 65 games, leading the NBA in rebounds and block shots as well, 14.4 and 3.2 respectively. This year though, Walton was selected to his first All-Star game and was also named All-NBA First Team for Defense and All-NBA Second Team for his regular season accomplishments. He would lead the Blazers with a stat line of 18.6 points per game, 14.4 rebounds, 3.8 assists, and 3.2 blocks, good enough for a 49-33 record in third in the West. In the playoffs, they beat the artist Gilmore Chicago Bulls 2-3 in the first round and the Dan Issel-led Nuggets 4-2 in the second round. Then, in a real shocker, they would go on to sweep the Los Angeles Lakers, Walden outplaying his former UCLA teammate Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to help take the Blazers to their first finals appearance in franchise history. And it wouldn't be an easy one, as they would go on to face the Philadelphia 76ers. After dropping the first two games, they would rally back and win four straight to capture, to this day, their only championship. Who else but Bill Walton was named Finals MVP after his 20-point, 23-rebound masterclass to clinch the ring in Game 6. And after the series, 76ers coach Gene Shue would go on to say, Bill Walton is the best player for a big man who has ever played the game of basketball. His last two years as a Blazer unfortunately wouldn't go the same way, as in the 1977-1978 season, the Blazers would start off hot going 50-10 and 10 as Walden averaged 18.9 points per game, 13.2 rebounds, 5 assists, and 2.5 blocks in 58 games. Unfortunately, Walden would suffer a broken foot, thus ending his regular season. Portland would only go on to win 8 more games the rest of the season, and obviously, Bill Walton would go on to become the first and only Portland Trail Blazer to win the MVP award. And he also got his first in both 
all NBA categories of defense and overall. Unfortunately, Walton was injured in his playoff comeback, and it would be the last time the fans would ever see him in a Blazers jersey. The next year, he would demand a trade, citing unethical and incompetent treatment of his and other players' injuries by the Blazers front office. And the front office obviously would not accept this trade request, and he sat out the whole 1979 season until his free agency later that year. This would close the door as Bill Walton's time as a Portland Trailblazer. But next up, they'd have a guy so smooth that he would eventually be named Clyde the Glide. Let me introduce you all to Clyde Drexler. Today, Clyde Drexler is known as one of the smoothest guys to ever play the game of basketball, but I'm sure it would surprise you if I told you that he wasn't that good of a player in high school. He failed to make the cut on varsity as a sophomore and played as a 6'6 center as a senior. In fact, he didn't have many schools looking to recruit him at all. And after a childhood friend got in contact with the University of Houston coach Guy Lewis, they would eventually take a chance on the hometown kid who would form basically a college super team, another future Hall of Famer and Akeem Olajuwon, in which they would call Phi Slamma Jamma. These high flyers would make it to two straight Final Four appearances, and Drexler would end his career as the only player in school history to have a combined total of 1,000 career points, 900 rebounds, and 300 assists, and is still the all-time steals leader, 268. Due to these stellar seasons and Portland looking for a new identity post-Walton, the Blazers would select Drexler with the 14th overall pick in the 1983 draft. Famously, in a little bit of basketball trivia, the reason the Blazers wouldn't select a certain guard out of the University of North Carolina the next year was because they selected Drexler this year and didn't need another guard. So in another timeline, they end up with Drexler and Jordan, which would have been crazy. But after being drafted, he had two quiet but very promising first two seasons in the league putting up a respectable 7.7 .7 points per game in 17.2 minutes of his rookie season, then upping it to 17.2 points per game, 6 rebounds, and 5.5 assists and 2.2 steals in only his second season. His third, though, was when Drexel would break out as a star in the league, averaging 18.5 points per game, 5.6 rebounds, 8 assists, and 2.6 steals, even scoring a then-career-high 50 points against the Sacramento Kings in a double overtime victory but it would be his fourth season where he showed just how much of a star he'd be. This year, Drexler would lead the Portland Trailblazers back to the NBA Finals for only the second time in NBA history, averaging 23.3 points per game, 6.9 rebounds, and 5.9 assists, and giving the fans a national stage they hadn't seen in over 10 years. His opponent, however, wouldn't be an easy one as he matched up against the Detroit Pistons in the middle of their reign of terror over the NBA. And although they would end the first two games tied 1-1, to -one, they'd go on to lose the next three straight and be defeated by the Pistons 4-1. Fresh off this first taste of the finals though, the Drexler-led Blazers rallied back for a franchise-best 63-19 record, but unfortunately they'd be defeated 4-2 by the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals. His best individual season though was yet to come as he would up his averages to 25 points per game, 6.6 .6 rebounds, and 6.7 assists, making All-NBA first team and finishing second to Michael Jordan in MVP voting. Unsurprisingly, his 57 and 25 Blazers would face off against these Jordan Bulls in a close series in the NBA Finals that would stretch to six games. But unfortunately, the Blazers would again fall short. This would be the last trip to the finals for the Blazers as they haven't been back since. And regardless of those two finals losses, Drexler did something for the franchise that they hadn't seen since Bill Walton. He gave the city of Portland a sense of hope, a sense that they have a superstar player who's better than most of the whole league, a real guy that they can rely on. Eventually though, in 1995, the Blazers would honor Drexler's request as they really weren't doing too well and would be traded to a contender which unsurprisingly would be the Houston Rockets. Eventually, he would team up with Akeem Olajuwon for another championship, but his records would still stand for decades, and what he did for Portland would never ever be forgotten. Clyde the Glide is a legend in his city. He was the leading all-time scorer of the franchise with 18,040 points, and undoubtedly one of, if not the most popular player in the franchise's history. Well, he was until a highly touted guard out of Weber State would
would take the stage in 2012. Today, we know who Damian Lillard is. Back in 2009, he was just a three-star recruit out of Oakland High, California. Coming in at only six feet tall and 165 pounds, he would commit to Weber State and instantly make an impact, averaging 11.5 points per game and being named the Big Sky Conference Freshman of the Year and First Team All Big Sky. He would up this feat his sophomore year though, scoring 19.9 points per game and being named the Big Sky Player of the Year. At this point, Lillard was starting to make headlines as one of the best guards in the nation, and after an injury shortened third season, he would almost lead the nation in scoring at 24.5 points per game, capturing his third first team all selection and won his second Big Sky Player of the Year award. Feeling like he had nothing left to prove, Lillard would declare for the NBA draft and be selected six overall to the Portland Trailblazers, starting one of the most memorable and iconic 10 years for the Blazers ever. Now, in Lillard's rookie season, he would prove these Blazers right by having 23 points and 11 assists in his debut, and going on average stellar numbers of 19 points per game, 3.1 rebounds, and 6.5 assists in 38 minutes, and also starting all 82 games as a rookie. He would be one of only four players in history to unanimously win Rookie of the Year, and join Oscar Robertson and Allen Iverson as the only rookies in NBA history to tally an excess of 1,500 points and 500 assists for a season. Literally Hall of Fame company. He would also want to break the NBA rookie record for three-pointers and the Portland franchise record as well. The next year, though, would become even more memorable as he was selected to his first All-Star game and was All-NBA 13, averaging 20.7 points per game, 5.6 assists, and 3.5 rebounds. This was truly the season that put Lillard on the map, as he would go on to hit a series-winning buzzer beater of the Rockets in Game 6 to finally bring the franchise a trip to the second round, the first time in a really long time. And even though they'd go on to lose to the Spurs in 5 games, everybody knew Lillard's name in the NBA, and if they didn't, they'd for sure know in 2015. This year, Lillard set career highs in points, rebounds, steals, and field goal percentage, but struggled with his three-point shooting at a career low of 34%. Regardless, the Blazers still won their division, getting the four seed with a 51-31 and record as Lillard was once again selected to be an All-Star. However, a first-round matchup against Memphis would once again spell a quick playoff exit for the Blazers. And unfortunately, this would become a theme for the team, as even though Lillard and co-star CJ McCollum were having success in the regular season, the playoffs often had other ideas. The next year, they would make it out of the first round again, Lillard becoming the fastest player ever to reach 5,000 points and 1,500 assists. Even at this young age, the league knew how dangerous Damon had become, even finishing 8th in the MVP race this year. However, a familiar opponent would stop them short of the conference finals, as they would lose 4-1 to the Golden State Warriors. The next year, he would also end up playing the Warriors, but in the first round as the 8th seed. This was more of an up and down season, and really a crazy carry job by Dame. He averaged a then career high 27 points per game, helped get to the playoffs where they'd subsequently unfortunately be swept again. Determined to steer the ship around though, Dame would once again have another prolific scoring season, setting averages and breaking even more Portland records. He would have 26.9 points per game, 4.5 rebounds, and 5.9 assists, and this season he would even eclipse the 10,000 point mark, and have some insane scoring stretches like scoring 197 points in just a span of 5 games. This season, he would become All-NBA First Team, a feat only two other Portland Trailblazers have replicated. Unsurprisingly, it's the other two people we've talked about, Drexler and Walton. He would also place fourth in MVP voting, his highest finish ever, and leading the Blazers to the third seed and a real shot at doing something in the playoffs. Famously though, Bate had other plans, as Lillard wouldn't score over 20 points in a four-game sweep at the hand of the Anthony Davis-led Pelicans. A major pattern in Dame's career is his lack of winning. The guy is absolutely one of the most skilled players in the league, but he just can't get over the hump of the second round. This year, that narrative would finally change though. He would pass LaMarcus Aldridge to become the second most leading scorer in Blazers history. And if you remember this season, you know that this is when the legacy of damn time truly came into view. He proved himself as one of the most elite players in the league this year, and he was an absolute scoring machine. He became the first Blazer to have over 2,000 points and 500 assists in the season and placed sixth in the MVP race. In the first round of the playoffs, 
they would face off against the Oklahoma City Thunder, and in one of the most iconic moments in NBA history, he would hit an insane 37-foot game winner to send them home in his own home building. It is truly one of the most iconic moments in the NBA of all time, and even better, he would finally vanquish another curse and finally make it past the second round after a back and forth seven game series against the Nuggets. But time and time again, the biggest opponent was always the Golden State Warriors. And just like times past, they would be swept again, thus ending Dame's furthest run to date. Subsequent seasons all went similarly to this one. Dame putting up unreal numbers, but still lacking the ability to get it done in the playoffs. He would go on to score a career-high 71 points in 2023, and that season averaged a career-high of 32 points per game as well. He would also surpass Clyde Drexler in becoming the leading scorer all-time for the franchise on December 19th, which, in a move that a lot of people think makes him the best blazer of all time. But again, why are we here? Well, to figure out just that. Who is the best blazer? Now that I've walked you through all three of the guys here, we're going to see how they stack up against each other, and we're going to figure out who makes the best case for the GOAT of the Portland Trail Blazers. Here I've taken the time to outline some categories that I feel like are important to determine who is the GOAT for this franchise. Seasons played is one of the more important stats, as it's not crazy to say a player can be in the conversation even though they've only played a couple years for the franchise, a la Miami LeBron. But I feel like longevity to a franchise is very important to the culture, and that's why I added this on here. Drexler and Lillard are neck and neck in this regard, with Drexler having slightly the edge 12 to 11, and Walton only having 5, technically 4 since he sat out one. Next is total points, with Lillard becoming the franchise leader in this recent year, and both Drexler and Lillard dwarfing the total that Walton has. He wouldn't be looking good for my mans if he didn't arguably have two of the most important pluses on this list. Not only is he the only Portland Trailblazer in history to ever win the MVP award, he's also the only Blazer to have a finals MVP as well as a ring. Drexler has more appearances at two, but no wins, and Dame hasn't even won a Western Conference Finals game in his whole career. That last stat is the most interesting though, as VORP is a great stat that's very similar to wins above replacement in baseball for stats nerds like me. It's how many more wins that player has generated over their career in comparison to a replacement level player. And Clyde has the edge here by almost 10 points, and looking at it, it makes sense as the sustained success he's had in Portland, as a matter of fact, his whole career is kind of insane. Drexler has never missed the playoffs in his entire career, and also led Portland to their franchise record of 63 wins. Reasons like these are what made me originally think that Drexler was a lock to be the franchise go. But after recent events and Damian Lillard requesting a trade out of Portland, it's made me rethink a couple of things in this whole situation and has really posed an interesting stance in this whole video as a whole. Now, I've deliberately left out one aspect in this list, and that is cultural impact. Because when I look at each player and what they've done for their city outside of their franchise, it became more and more obvious who I would pick as the GOAT. I feel like one underrated aspect of a player when considering these GOAT talks is what they've done for their city and their team. LeBron James single-handedly brought the Cleveland Cavaliers out of irrelevancy and gave the city a sense of hope unlike any other. Ken Griffey Jr., he was the Mariners and still to this day is one of the most iconic players in baseball history. And when I think of players like that, I think of Damian Lillard for the Blazers. Yes, he hasn't made it to the finals or even won a Western Conference Finals game. Yes, he hasn't won an MVP or led the team with franchise record of wins, but he has done arguably more in terms of culture than any of these players ever. He has arguably some of the most iconic moments, if not the most iconic moments as a Portland Trailblazer ever, and he has done a tremendous job in the community and his social impact as well. He has brought the Blazers back to relevancy during a dry period in the franchise, and he is probably the most beloved player in their history, without a doubt. Portland fans love him despite his shortcomings, and it's because he's the heart and soul of the city. And as a stats nerd, I'll admit that sometimes stats don't tell the whole truth, and this is one of those cases. 
The whole time of making this video, I wanted to say that Drexel was a franchise GOAT, and I still very well think that he might be. But after completing this video, I think my vote is going to go to Damian Lillard as the greatest Portland Trailblazer ever. But who do you guys think is the franchise GOAT? Put your thing down in the comment section below, and I'd love to hear you guys' reasoning as well. And I just wanted to say thank you guys for all the viewers and kind words of support. This is my first video of this sort of length, and I want to do more in-depth analyses in the future. So if you like this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell so I can keep making the best content for you guys. Thank you guys again, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace!